So this week, we've got one of my favorite books ever. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. This is Amin with Sira Masters, developing the Muslim mindset for success. Now, finally, we're going to get into a book review from Sira Masters. Last week, put out a video, crazy, crazy response. Alhamdulillah, so many comments. And one of the things, I mean, a lot of people were saying, you know, just keep doing your thing. But some people were saying, do book reviews. Okay. So this week, we've got one of my favorite books ever Four Hour Work Week. Okay. Four Hour Work Week, one of my favorite books by Tim Ferriss. Um, I don't know, it's kind of, it's kind of long, I would say but it's, it's an enjoyable read, you know. Usually I don't read for enjoyment, I read to learn, but this is actually enjoyable, okay? Um, just the first note to, to mention is that this book has nothing to do with working four hours a week, okay? It's not about not working much, it's not about being lazy, um, it's just, you know, that's the title that works. You know, sometimes you gotta do that in order to get people's attention, and then once they read it, they realize what it's really about. Okay, so we're gonna get into the main principles that I took from this and that I apply really to most of my life. Like it's crazy how much this one book has impacted my life in a very practical way. Okay, so I've mentioned that it's not about working less. Um, so what is it about? So number one principle from this book is to control the three W's in your life. What are the three W's? What you do, where you do it, and who you do it with, okay? Now, um, a lot of the time he's talking about how you make money, so what you do to make money, where you have to go to make money, and then who you work with. Um, and I always understood from the day one when I read that, I, I love the framework of controlling those three things, um, but I understood the what very well, okay? Um, I think most people understand the value of working on what you want to work on, right? Doing work that matters to you, that's important, that it, maybe even you enjoy. But only recently I understood the importance of controlling who you work with. Because the people that you surround yourself with um, a lot of the day are going to really affect um, your personality and how, how ambitious you can be and the type of things that, that you can do. So uh, I noticed that as well. And then where, where you work, like that's a good one as well. Like, you know, us Muslims, obviously, we would prefer that we're in a Muslim country, you know, where the people around us are Muslim, where the, there's plenty of mosques. Um, where it's a nice family environment, etc., etc., right? Safe, security, nice weather, whatever. So that's also a very, very important one. And I don't think it's one that we should ignore. You know, a lot of us, I think, especially in the West, we might think, well, I just live here and that's just it. But what if you can control that W, you know? So three Ws, try to control them as much as possible. What you do, where you do it, who you do it with, okay? And it doesn't just apply to your work, how you make a living, but it applies in general as well. So that's the number one principle that I took from this book. And when I'm making plans, when I'm making goals, a lot of it is, is predicated on those three things, trying to control those three things. Next principle. Principle number two is defining what you really want and what you really need, okay? Um, a lot of us, um, we are defined by what um, is told to us, yeah? Whether that's by newspapers, whether it's by bloggers, vloggers, um, Instagram, random people on Instagram, our friends, our family, right? However, um, what he's saying in this book is the first kind of principle is to define for yourself what you want. So for an example, I want um, to have a four bedroom house in a Muslim country. I wanna be married with kids, blah, 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 okay. Now, the, 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 what society would have you believe is that in order to do that, you need to do well in school, do well in university, get a good job, and wherever, after that, wherever you can find a job, um, you go and do that job and you work and you try as much as you can to save money and do a budget and blah, 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 and then you can afford that house after you get enough experience to afford a big house and kids and family, all of that stuff. But is that the only way? So basically what he's saying is to look outside of um, your what's normal, what is expected. Is there a way that you could do that same thing uh, without uh, doing the traditional way, which could be the harder way? Uh, the example I believe he gives is that if you want to live in Sweden for a while, 
then instead of thinking, how can I go and live in Sweden and make money in Sweden? I don't know the place. How am I going to get a job in Sweden? I don't speak Swedish. What if you just got a job at, let's say you're American, you, you get a job at the American embassy in Sweden. Boom, you got a job in Sweden, you live in Sweden, and you didn't need to learn Swedish. It's, a, it's another way, but you have to be creative in your thinking. So the principle is about defining what do you want and is there a way other than society's normal way of getting that, is there another way to go about getting that? That's pretty much principle number two. Then I would add actually principle 2B, okay? Part of it is you want whatever lifestyle you want because this book really, this is the guy, okay, that created lifestyle design. He created that phrase, okay? And I love that phrase, lifestyle design. If you want to design your lifestyle, control those three Ws, okay? How much, most of the time, the barriers are money, is income, okay? He tells you in this book, this is principle 2B, okay? Define for yourself how much money you actually need, right? And he even goes through, if you want a Ferrari and this and this and this, he breaks it down and it's actually not a huge not amount of money that you need to achieve that, okay? Once you break it down and you write the exact numbers, how much money you need to make monthly, weekly, daily in order to achieve that dream lifestyle, it becomes more tangible. It's like, oh, I don't need blah, 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 actually, you know? I can actually achieve that with just this amount of money, okay? So break it down, set exactly what you want, okay? And, and go for it, you know? Um, and obviously with your lifestyle design, only one of the things that you're trying to achieve and, 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 and control is what you have having, yeah? But what you can do, the skills you have, and the, the uh, experience you, you, you can have, and what you are, those are other things you want to work on as well. So now on to principle three. Principle three really is less is more, okay? And the number one thing that uh, Tim Ferriss in this book mentions, and he goes on about it, and it's very important, and it's key for your life, is the Pareto principle, okay? Or the 80-20 rule, okay? What this states is that 80% of your results will come from 20% of your effort, okay? And it comes from an Italian economist who uh, witnessed this in kind of, uh, he was working in a factory and then he was looking at farms and he noticed that 80% of the crops come from 20% of the plants or 80% of the people working in the factory, sorry, 80% of the production factory was coming from 20% of the people, right? Um, and so this is a rule that, that sometimes it's 90-10, sometimes 70-30, but overall it's 80-20, right? And so he, he tells you, um, cha in chapter two is about eliminating, eliminating the excess, okay? And, uh, you know, he quotes, um, I believe it is, oh man, uh, yeah, he, it's, it's an author, yeah? It's, I love this quote. He said, perfection is not um, basically adding, but taking away the unnecessary, yeah? That's how you reach, obviously you can't reach perfection, but to get towards that, you have to remove rather than adding, usually, okay? So if you only need 20% effort to get 80% of the results, what do you wanna remove? The 80% extra effort that you would require to get just 20% more results, okay? So he's saying in this book, he says, use the Pareto principle, identify the 80% um, of the results that come from 20% of the effort, do more of that 20% of the effort, do more of that, more of that, more of that, and the 80%, just throw it away. That's what he's saying. And he gives the example of how, um, when he, had, he started his business, he realized that 80% of his revenue was coming from 20% of his customers. And the 80% other customers were actually the headache for him, the ones that would always complain, the ones that always wanted discounts, and blah, blah, blah. So what he did, he got rid of those customers. He said, you're not allowed to buy from me anymore. And those 20% that got him 80% of revenue, he dealt with them and he was happy and they were happy and it was all good. So that's, uh, that's his example. Uh, so basically, less is more. Eliminate what is not working, what is not effective, and uh, focus on that 20%, which gets you 80% of the results. Now, another principle that he mentions in the second chapter about elimination and eliminating waste is going on a low information diet. That means uh, a lot of it is about email, so about only checking your email once a day. This is 
common for people who have office jobs. They've got emails coming in all the time. Uh, so he has loads. I mean, you read the book if you want to see all the examples and all the ways you can deal with this. But one example is that you only check your email once a day. And people will eventually learn that if they're expecting a reply, they know they'll get it at this time. If they send an email after that time, you're not going to get back to them until the next day. And you need to train people to know that. Same with in person, right? You, you can have a kind of office hours where um, in, from this time to this time, you will talk to people, you'll take meetings, blah, blah, blah. But other than that, you're busy, you're working, you're, do, you're, you're doing your focused work, right? You're not wasting time chit-chatting with people. And another thing that he mentions is that so many people in the, in the average office environment, okay, they are busy trying to be efficient, okay? Efficient, what's efficient? It means that the things you do you get a lot done in a short amount of time, okay? That's efficient. What's wrong with efficiency? What is important is not that you do a lot in a short amount of time, it's that you do the right things in the short amount of time. And that's where he says you need to be effective and not efficient. Being effective means you're doing the correct things rather than just being busy. And he said, you know, the office is full of people that are, they're on the phone, blah, 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 oh, I've got this call, I've got this meeting. They're doing things that don't get them anywhere. They don't get results, okay? Um, and he says, look, people, they're pretending, they're all acting that they're doing a lot of work. You should not care about what you look like. You should just do, you know, do what you need to be doing, do what is effective. Um, another great example he gives is he was working as a salesperson, um, I think in Xerox, and um, he noticed that he wants to, you know, he had to like cold call people and offer them the printing services of Xerox, right? So what did he do? He would, uh, between about, I think it was eight and five, okay? Eight in the morning, five, that was his work hours, right? He would call nobody in those hours because he realized that 80% of his uh, leads would be available before eight and after five, okay? That's when they're early in the office, they're not really stuck into work yet. Okay, um, and so, and that's when also the receptionists have gone home by then. So the important people are going to be the ones directly answering the call. So he would get to work early before eight o'clock. He would make a ton of calls. After five p.m., he'd make a ton of calls, and in the in that middle chunk, he would just work on his business. Okay, now that's not so ethical, right? However, he 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 was very effective because he was doing the right things in those short short times and again that's the Pareto principle in action okay on to the next uh, principle now the next principle really I mean half this book is about setting up a business that you can um, operate from anywhere in the world basically using the internet and a lot of these I mean right now this this book was I believe published in 2004 so he was really ahead of his time a lot of these um, things are being done very widespread but it's not too stuffed for you to try it yourself so a lot of it is you know, finding uh, stuff in China, making your own uh, e-commerce website, selling that kind of stuff, selling information, selling advertising, anything to do with the internet really. But um, also other opportunities have opened up since he wrote this book. Stuff like freelancing um, is becoming more um, accepted and more, you know, people are reaching out to get freelancers. People more and more, they don't care where you are. They don't need you sitting there in the office. They, they, they will allow you to you know, go out and uh, do your work from other place in the world, right? Now, what does that mean? If you are in the UK and you're getting paid a UK salary, but you're living in Egypt, you're gonna be living like a king, okay? So that's why he's calling uh, geo-arbitrage, right? So taking advantage of the currency differences and the fact that you know all you need is the internet to get a lot of your work done. He also has a whole script of how to convince your boss to allow you to work from home. And then once he allows you to work from home, eventually you can start um, doing what he calls mini retirements, which is where you spend uh, a month or three months of the year in another country doing your work, right? I think he says your boss doesn't need to know um, as long as you're doing your work. But the first step of that whole process is making sure that you are more effective. You get more do work done in less time than anyone else in your workplace, okay? First, you have to be the most uh, you know, valuable person in the workplace. Then you can start saying, hey, can I work from home? Hey, can I, um, you know, can I uh, work from another country, X, Y, Z, okay? And he gives you a whole script for how to do that in this uh, book. 
So um, that's that principle of taking advantage of the internet and how a lot of people now, they don't really need you to be right there. And so you can work from anywhere in the world and take advantage of those currency differences. And finally, it's just the last principle I would mention is this idea of lifestyle design. Okay, it's the idea that you know there are so many options out there for you to do things differently and more effectively than 95% of the world. For example, there are, you can hire people um, in uh, countries where they don't need a lot of money to live, so you don't have to pay them a ton of money. Someone on a middle uh, middle class income can afford this for sure. You can hire people to be your assistant. If you want shopping ordered, they can do that for you. If you want to buy something on Amazon, they can do that for you. If you need someone to remind you to do X, Y, Z, they can do that for you, okay? And so it's this idea of don't say no, instead have this mentality of experimenting, okay? So there are all these things available in the world, right? And 90% of people don't know about them and they might know, they might hear it, they're skeptical, they never try it. But it's about being, you know, experimenting uh, with all these options available. You know, the internet has allowed us to do crazy things, but most of us are not embracing that. We're not, we're not doing these things, right? And so um, it's, it's a great book, you know, Lifestyle Design Control. This is the number one takeaway I got from this book is to control the three W's in your life, to try and do that the best. That, that is the number one takeaway. And then... Um, the second I would say is to be effective and not efficient, you know, increase like he says, you know, when people say, you know, the four hour work week, like it's about being lazy. His response is actually, it's not about working four hours a week. It's about, um, 10 Xing your hourly output. Okay. Because if you're, if you 10 times your hourly output, then you only need to work, you know, less hours, like not four hours, maybe instead of working 40 hours, you can work 10 hours and you get the same amount of work done if you're effective. And so there's also some productivity and stuff in this book as well. So, I mean, this, is, this book is what I'm about, really. I mean, really. So yeah, obviously a lot of it you have to, not a lot, but some of it you have to filter out and kind of feel sorry for him when he has a little chapter about how um, once you've, you know, you've achieved this lifestyle where you're in control of the three W's, you're making money from the internet, you can live anywhere in the world and you can live with whoever will come with you um, and you can do a, a business or whatever that you love, um, then you're going to start feeling emptiness and you're going to feel like, oh, is this, is this it and all of that. And he basically tells you in this chapter to just ignore that feeling of, you know, is this it? What's my purpose? He just tells you to ignore that, which is obviously really ridiculous and stupid. It just shows you that no matter how smart someone is to write this book and give you great tips, um, without the Hidayah of Allah, without the guidance of Allah, kind of lost at the same time, right? So, you know, we take the good from the book and that kind of chapter, you could just throw that in the bin. Um, but again, this is what I'm about. Uh, 10x your hourly output. Try and control the three W's in your life and just be open-minded and, and take advantage of um, the great opportunities in the world and don't Take no for an answer. See if there's another way around things always and be resourceful. Um, this has been Amin with Sira Masters. I hope you like this first uh, book review from Sira Masters. Uh, it's a bit of a long video, but this book is quite long and I just love the book, right? So uh, this is Amin with The 4-Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thanks for watching that video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in how to design your mindset and design your lifestyle as a Muslim so you can get everything you want done, then make sure you subscribe to this channel for at least weekly videos and check out the website right there where you can download free mindset resources and look at our blog with all the articles and stuff there. Uh, check it out and uh, see you.